So, this is all I want to do. Uh, can I do another poem? Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to do this piece and then we can talk a little bit. Cool. We can ask the question. Think your brain right now. Y'all too quiet for me. <laughs> I'm from the northwest side of Chicago. It's really good over there. We're really loud. I'm not used to being quiet. Even in the morning, this is how I usually talk. If you were in the car with me and we were driving down the street, this is how I would talk to you. And you'd be really upset because it's too damn early to be that loud. Um, so for me, you know, when I was uh, struggling with this issue of identity, there was a, a summer in my neighborhood where there was 40 shootings um, and four murders within a, within, a, within a weekend. It was like a three day weekend in my neighborhood of Chicago. It wasn't like all of Chicago, it was like that neighborhood. And I started to struggle with this issue of violence because a lot of times when we see things on the news and we see things on television, and in particular like Chicago's a hotbed right now musically but also in the news around this issue called Chirac, which is like Chicago's a war zone, right? And if you go to any community of color, a lot of times you deal with similar issues um, around violence. But I wanted to think about what would make a young person kill another young person. And I started to think about this issue called colonialism, and I started thinking about this issue of self-hate and racism and internalized racism. So these concepts are really like college concepts, and a lot of times in my community, I can't just go up to people and say, hey, do you know about colonialism? And start trying to like talk to them about these issues if I'm not relating to them in a real way. And so when a young person deals with another young person in a negative way, a lot of times it's a reflection of self. So if you don't love yourself, and the person closest to you is someone that looks like you, walks like you, talks like you, acts like you, thinks like you, smells like you. It's really a reflection of you. So it's very easy for somebody in the hood to kill someone that looks like them because they don't love themselves. And um, so I tried to struggle with this issue, and I created this piece called Man With No Name. Um, and then I'll perform this piece for you guys. I'm getting over a cold, so I struggle sometimes through certain lines. I touch pen to paper, let my voice be heard in search of the true word of God. I'm wondering about the situation that we in. When will it all end? They tell me the end is near, but what should I fear? It's here in a lonely night. My mind takes flight in the search for the light, but I can't lie to my sight. But what I see through the facade of a fake democracy, monetary units got young me living in blast and with no hope. Young babies gonna hook that dope, sure he died on with the sales of coke. Eyes only seen through the gun smoke. Yet I must maintain this a part of this worldly game, but who's to blame when the East they came in the name of God? They brought tribes and chains to work the rugged terrain. Some left a man colonized with no name. Some left a man with no name. Bred in my blood by Spanish rule, very apparent by the white skin and the green eyes I see the world through. The truth is hard to swallow, but how can you swallow if you can't even chew? One of the confusion without a clue of what to do. Only seeing the world in blue, left with no options. What would you do? I question our very existence. What does it all mean? All that I've seen, walking life with no legs and a wobbly high beam. Pain, agony, hate, venom, rage are all that exists. At least it tells us what it seems. Every corner a new scheme, your vision must be keen to be something away with the wrong team. But who's to say who's wrong or right? I'm just a man prepared to fight for universal human rights. I'm blinded by the light, yet I can't see at night. And despite the evil games, corporations, and governments play, I must find my way to the struggle day by day. In these times, you could be killed by what you say. But if left unsaid, I would rather be dead. But if left unsaid, I would rather be dead. The truth shall set you free. At least it was taught to me. I had ate from the tree of knowledge, locked in a paradise with no key. Knowledge of self history gives you identity. Knowledge of self history gives you identity, which is more powerful than any gun, any weapon, any army. It's combat of the mind. This isn't the dependence to commit crime because our population made a climb. My ancestors have two times to be put it around to get a fine. They prepared a climb in order to reach the divine. Reality got me hurt and certain what the future for our youth to be. Caught up in a cycle of poverty, drug abuse into HIV, robbery, love sense of community, practice of equality, your race history, get on misery, kill it for currency, no identity, three strikes like your that's just policy. Why you gotta save us theology, outright tyranny, false through the wheat, our freedom to the cut down tree, lock with a broken key, lost responsibility. Time to create our own realities. That's not peace. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or a few questions. Let me get actually kind of 
I'm really looking more at the students. So if I don't see y'all move your heads, I'm gonna just be like, all right, because like the teachers will be like, yeah, of course. Everybody else is like, so. All right. Oh, and this is open to teachers too. This this session. Uh, this part of it, so, you know, I don't want to feel like you're being oppressed. Oh, so. um, go ahead. Could you could we find any of your poetry online anywhere? Yeah, my website is uh, raisedpoetry.com. Um, I have some cards that I'll give out before uh, you leave. Um, and um, <clears throat> you know, I used to want to be a rapper really bad and stuff, so I wear Jordans and gold chains and things like that, but then I was just a poet. Um, but I kept that sentiment. So if you go onto my website, I have a lot of music videos. I have about um, six that are posted right now. Um, I'm constantly working on new music videos. It's like MTV quality type videos. Um, with the new technology you have, um, you can create really beautiful visuals um, if you don't have to use the tools that you have. So yeah, if you go online, you can see all, all my stuff is up there. And you can see it on YouTube and on Twitter and uh, Instagram. I like to use the gram a lot. I guess you can see me on Instagram. Um, you say that you want to be rappers. Is there any rappers that are very inspirational to you? Like any of your favorite rappers that you that play? Yeah, I mean, I like, I, I like a lot of new stuff as well as old stuff. I like J. Cole. I listen to Kendrick Lamar. I like Chance the Rapper. But then I like that the same, in the same breath, um, I like a lot of like kind of, um, I don't know how to express it without swearing, but good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, so like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes out of it that I really like too, that I enjoy. Too. So I like to have a balance, not just all that conscious All right, so um, any other questions? Oh man, you can't have three questions in a row, man. <laughs> so he might have to during no other questions. Right, okay, we'll go here and then we'll go there. But. I'm really curious how, because you said you're full of rage, like how did you, was, was there a process or did you just immediately like turn to poetry? Like how did you go rage in poetry? Um, Does that make sense? I, yeah, but I don't think like growing up that I even need to be a poet. I didn't even know like my job existed. Um, before I was doing poetry full time, I was a youth organizer. I didn't even know that was a job. Um, so I went basically a transition slowly, right? Like, I didn't know I was very good at, like, the thing is like, you'll be surprised how encouraging, especially as a role as a teacher, and how damaging teachers can be as well. But how encouraging a teacher can be just by saying, oh, you should try that out. You seem like you're pretty good at it. Um, because it was a teacher in eighth grade that suggested I should try to write it. Um, because she read like one poem that was probably like the most remembered <coughs> poem, but it was a political poem, but it was probably the most simple poem. And that encouragement, um, step after step, allowed me to kind of get to a space where then I felt like I realized like from a it's a poet named Malik Yusuf, who's my, one of my like poetry mentors. Malik Yusuf is in Chicago, and Malik Yusuf um, writes for Kanye West. He's a ghostwriter. Um, he wrote a few songs. Um, as well as this other artist, Ryan Best, who, wrote, who, um, who also writes for Kanye West. And Malik Yusuf is like my mentor. So I saw Malik Yusuf putting music videos out around poetry. Right? And so that encouraged me to be like, all right, well, if he can do that in Chicago, I think I can do it too. Um, but it was a slow transition. Right? I was finding my outlet. My outlet just happened to be poetry. Like at the time when I was first, first started writing, my cousin had just got incarcerated and was basically doing a life sentence um, for attempted murder, but he was only 15 and got incarcerated um, trying to shoot up. He did shoot somebody and went to prison. So my kind of closest male kind of role model then was in prison. Um, and in some ways, um, I didn't have that kind of to follow me. Um, and so art became kind of an outlet. Culture became a space for me. Um, in fact, Um, yeah, I mean, I collaborate with a lot of artists, um, like, consistently. Um, my last album was with this young brother named DJ Ozone, and DJ Ozone has a really good name and kind of, like, music. Um, and he worked with a lot of different artists, and we collaborate on albums. Um, a lot of times, as a poet, I collaborate with producers to kind of put together something like that. You said you were out of Mm -hmm. Is as you 
brought the, uh, the stuff that he writes like for like his new stuff like Jesus or for like No, I was from his well he writes I mean he's part of good music, so he writes for the whole label. Like if you write for a team, you're gonna write for I don't even know how many accolades he had, but he wrote he wrote um especially for college dropout. Crack music, and um, I don't know if you heard how to drop out, but like that, that last kind of bars on that verse, which is like a poem, um, is is um, really juicy. And he's done other stuff too. With, 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 he got a Grammy from that. But uh, what's the name of your album? What's that? What's the name of your album? My album is called We Are. I have three albums, but the last album is called We Are, which just is about. My experience is in the U.S. as a lot of people kind of struggle with those issues. Um, the last single that I put out was um, last video I put out was called "Bring Him Home," which was about a Puerto Rican political prisoner, um, and we filmed it in uh, Puerto Rico, we filmed in uh, New York, and we filmed Philadelphia, Detroit, and Chicago. And we just traveled to kind of film this story about two kids traveling and trying to bring this guy to the hospital. Bed. Um, we'll take like maybe two more and then I'll do maybe another piece. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't He's just assuming now. Was there ever a point where you just wanted to give up? Was like poetry? Yeah. Um, there was a point where I wasn't brave enough to try it full time. Like, what happens a lot of times is that with artists or with folks that may have a talent in something, we don't really try hard enough to really break through. So we do just a little bit so people give us kind of accolades. But our fear to fail outweighs our fear to be successful. What I mean by that is like, um, I've been full time for five years as an artist. I've been professional for about 15 years. And there was a point where I was just a little too afraid, I think, to step out and be a full time artist. Um, because there's always a lot more haters than there's people being positive. I don't know why we just love to like say like, oh, I'm gonna be a rapper, like I can do that. Oh, I wanna play ball, no, you can't even do that. Um, and what I feel is that people project what they're not willing to do onto you. What I mean by that is if you have a dream, right, all of you should have some type of dream. Um, what takes place is if that dream isn't kind of aligned with what is normal, which is like, oh, go to college and get a job, and you know, you can be a nurse, which is a great thing to do. But if your dream is to be something else that's not normal, people tend to project onto you their own insecurities. That's why you get so many people telling you, oh, you're not going to be able to do that. Because you ain't going to be able to do that, but I guarantee you, I'm going to be able to do that. So for me, um, you know, there was times where I felt that. If I just did a little bit, people would give me some accolades, but I didn't have to really challenge myself. And so I had to focus on challenging myself. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah, so there was that. All right, so we'll do like um, one more question. Somebody different. What's your name? Dakota. What is it? Dakota. Dakota? So someone different than Dakota. <laughs> and then uh, I'll do like one last piece or something. Right. You got one? Oh, you don't have one or do you? Uh, uh, do you know some of the rappers from Chicago? Do I know some of them? Yeah. I ran into a lot of them because it's a small scene. Like, I don't know if you know they got bands, yeah. like, yeah. all that, that ignorance. I mean, I love it, but it really don't make no damn sense. <laughs> um, but, like, they got bands I ran into. Um, I was at something with, um, what's the dude from, uh, what's the one that produces all the time? He's like, a big dude with dreadlocks. King Lou. King Lou. Yeah. Ran to King Lou a few times. At an event. Um, it was like a positive event too, which was like an anti violence event, which was, was kind of cool actually. But at that same event, there was a bunch of other rappers, like, you know, underground hip hop artists, like Talib Ali, Ali, come over here. So it was weird. Go ahead. Um, you got band, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I didn't know this. She has a nice smile. I don't know. I didn't really uh -huh. know this. I was kind of like, I mean, I, I, mean I, I know her music, but I'm not a huge fan of it. But I like if somebody's doing something, I don't know, it's hard for me because at one level, you know, like the music is like, you know, in a way reflecting like this negative stuff, right? When people talk about Chief Keep, right? Chief Keep is like the poster child of negative music. Everybody knows who Chief Keep is, you've seen them on like, you know, television or like, <laughs> And to me, 
people, a lot of people from my generation who's a little bit older are like, oh, that's not real music. And I feel like it's kind of old people to me. But it's like, what happens is, I think in music, it's like, to me, Chief Keith is a reflection of what's happening in Chicago. He's from an area that's really underserved, where there's no program, where the kids a lot of times are left to the streets. And so what he's reflecting is that generation's kind of reality in a lot of ways. And it's a very simple kind of like, like you know, drill music beat with, you know, kind of like the, 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 the hooks kind of over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, but to me, it's interesting. Because I'm an artist, so I find it interesting. Some people don't really like it. I mean, I, find it, I, I enjoy it because it's how you want to be turned. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be listening all the time. You want to be like out just, you know, like kind of hanging out listening to music. You don't want to be thinking about what's happening. I said turn. I said it. But yeah, I guess if you want to use the longer version of it. I noticed like slang, if you notice like it comes out and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and then the word went from turned up to turned up to turn to I don't know what the next word is. I'll just leave it to Oh. 
So like one time, you know, my brother, he babysit. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, how hard can it be for the kids from the TV, watch the door explode, you'll be all right. <laughs> so she's like, kids don't work that way. So she's like running around the house, and she's like playing with a paper clip and start sticking it into like an electrical outlet. And I'm like, we're going to learn today. We're going to learn today. So, you know, she gets shot. And you just wait for a minute to make sure she's still alive. And she's breathing. I'm like, I told your ass not to be running around the damn house. <laughs> so it's like that, you know? So, um, you know. At the bell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, now that they unleash me, I feel a lot more comfortable. Um, I still have to be conscious. I'm telling you right now, like it's funny because I'll do like a, a conference, right? And it's like a clean version. And people will come to my show with their grandmother at night. And it's <laughs> like, people have this idea about poetry, but like at the end of the day, we're still artists. And like, if you just talk to us, it's like every file, every bad word that you can use in a sentence, I'll try to use just to make you know, people uncomfortable. And so like, the grandmother will be in the front, and I don't change it. It's going to be the same. People are like, but there's kids in the audience. You're going to brought your kids out tonight. <laughs> so for me, you know, it, it's fun with poetry. So I'll do this last piece um, called We Are. And um, it's just about like my struggle like with trying to project kind of Latino identity. And if you check out the video, there's like 50 people that are young people from across the country that identify as Latino. And they're like different looks. Because Latino can be black, you can look Asian, you can look native, you can look white like me. Every mix of identity is with the Latino. You know, one thing about Latinos is like, we'll have sex with anybody. Um, <laughs> and it's because we're mixed identity, right? Because we have everything in us. You know what I'm saying? So, um, same sex. Same sex. Alright, here we go. We are the wretched of the earth, the labor that moves the sand. We are spick, sniggers, wetbacks, venus, pork chops. We are U.S. treaty value. We are body and dwellers, culture creators that across communal skies. We are loving abuelos and abuelas. We are community builders, softening gentrification. We are vessels, politicos, we are freedom fighters, we are peasant farmers, urban harvest. We are the children of Latin America, vastly speaking, forgotten tongues in a new land, an ancient land. We are the children of African slaves, indigenous blood, Spanish conquest. We are Irish, German, Arab, Jewish, Muslim. We are the children of Simon Bolivar. We are the children of Pancho Villa, Zapata, of Chevalita, Bolita, Lebron. We are the children of Zapatistas. We are the children of Latin America, exiled to oblivion. We are love, compassion, and hope. We are Cesar Suega and Si Se Puede. We are elite shots on Congress. We are the Brown Berets and Chicano movement. We are the young lords. We are the Cuban people in 59. We are the Venezuelan Bolivarian Revolution. We are New Yorkian poets penning Puerto Rican pride. We are undocumented peoples crossing borders, breaking barriers and boundaries. We are separated families split by concrete thorns made of steel. We are Socorro, Bateo, Bano, Chicago, Boricua, Chicano, Chariqui, Mexicano, Puerto Rican, Dominicano, Centroamericano, Mexico, Rican, Latino, Chicano. We are breakers, DJs, MCs, painting poems on walls. We are loved, despised, hated, and asceticized. We are faces in project marches against the war in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Palestine. We are those who stand alongside blacks and free our people from modern day slavery. We are Christ, Moses, Getafuato, Tunisim. We are the sun that, sun that shines bright. We are unified from each other. We are the mano mano. We are the new American dream. We are those who create love from hate. Hope from despair, compassion from none, humility from arrogance. We are those who say live and help to live. We are five years of existence. Welcome to America. Welcome to the new world. Thank you. Um, so now it's time to do some Instagram uh, love real quick. So let's read some stuff. And just, uh, so I'm going to do section by section. So, you know, this guy looks really good in this. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all very much.